Hey, what's up guys? Have you heard of the book Mindset by Carol Dweck? It's sold over a million copies and it's been out since 2006, so I bet you've heard of it and probably many of you have even read it. Now, this week I learned that Michigan State University published a study in Psychology Today claiming that there's no solid scientific evidence showing that a growth mindset intervention programs that we have in schools produce improved results. So in other words, they're coming straight for Ms. Dweck and her life's work. Now, growth-based mindset at its core is the belief that you can continually improve your life by deliberately choosing thoughts that encourage both effort and resilience. So if you fall down, no problem, just get back up. Think about Serena Williams. By contrast, a fixed mindset believes that we get our lot in life and expending effort or trying harder won't cause any meaningful change, so why try? Like this is how things have always been, and that's the way they're always gonna be. Think about the old grumpy neighbor down the street that you'd rather not run into. <laughs> so the study that looked at grade point averages and SAT scores from over 400,000 students who were enrolled in these types of mindset, uh, growth mindset programs, and it found no correlation between those programs and academic performance. And so the researchers proudly concluded that students weren't benefiting from these programs. But in the article, they acknowledged that one of their beefs was that the programs weren't delivered to students using highest standards of research practices. Now listen, I'm the guy who posts positive affirm affirmations on Instagram every day, so of course something like this is gonna get my attention, right? <laughs> so when I read the results from the study, a few things stood out to me immediately. First, the study was done on school children in an environment where they didn't really have a choice. I mean, kids have to go to school because parents in the law say they have to. And they essentially take the classes that we make them take. So even a student who works to cultivate a growth-based mindset is doing so in an environment with heavily restricted choice. And I mean, sure, the student could put in more effort, but they have to at least put in a minimum amount of effort to get a C and pass the class anyway, right? And it feels a bit short-sighted to me to draw the conclusion that these programs are worthless by observing such a narrow window of a person's life. Now, in the professional world, of course, everything changes. You can do whatever you want. You can work for a corporation, work for yourself, strive to be the CEO or like totally change industries, like whatever. Like the only things we have to really do as adults are pay taxes and die. <laughs> um, but when the choice is truly our own, in my opinion, that's when a growth-based uh, growth mindset matters and it matters a lot. So my second thought was that I don't think it's fair to write off a growth mindset program for children because teachers didn't follow some strict scientific research practices. I mean, come on, I'm certain teachers today have far more to worry about than if the work that they're doing with their students will stand up to the rigors of scientific scrutiny. So maybe, just maybe with a bit of patience, these same researchers could follow the children into adulthood and see if any of them benefit later in life from a growth mindset program that they were enrolled in as a child. Now look, science is not perfect, but how many times have, as a society, we've been convinced by the science of something only to find out years later that the science itself has changed and so we change our mind? It's like the magic excuse for scientists and researchers. The science has changed. But in work with self-employed people, there are three business macros that I've talked about before. Mindset, sales methodologies, and marketing. And mindset is the most important one, you guys. Show me a brilliant salesperson who knows everything about operating a business, but who happens to have stinking thinking to honor a phrase from Zig Ziglar, and I'll show you a person who's struggling in life. In fact, maintaining a growth-based mindset was the primary topic that we worked on in Kick Your Own Butt Coaching during the month of January. And so these are a group of highly productive professionals who, rather than talk about the latest social media tactic, are intuitively understanding that their real performance is tied to the story that they have going on in their head. So Michigan State researchers, I say maybe go back and revisit your study. Now speaking of kick your own butt coaching, you may have missed that rather than one-on-one -on -one coaching where people pay me for an hour of time, this year I've created an all new small group mentoring experience and it combines the benefits of private coaching with the power of a mastermind. 
And right now, a dynamic group of people is forming, um, and we'll accept a maximum of 24 people this year. So who do you know that's been thinking for a, thinking about needing a coach or getting a coach? When that name comes to mind, would you be willing to connect me with them? Thank you. <laughs> I'll put a link below with the details of that program so you can check it out. Well, that's what I learned this week, you guys. And what about you? Was it this or was it something else? Drop down, leave a comment to keep this growth-based mindset discussion going, and let's show, the, show these researchers what's what. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, you guys. My name is Jason Edwards, and let's go think bigger this week.